Hey guys, this is Elise with Counseling Care Circle. I'm a licensed professional counselor here to do um, a project to help increase accessibility for Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. This project is hosted by Counseling Care Circle and it's in response to the murders in Georgia, which are still being processed. I have here my friend, Leora, and um, she has an experience that is unique and um, maybe very helpful for international students and other uh, first generation um, AAPI who are trying to navigate the education system. Uh, so Leora, it's nice to have you here. So glad to share this chat. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, I'd love to just hear a little bit about your experience of encountering the American education system and how, you know, what are some of the things that you've learned and what are some of the things that you were surprised by? Yeah, um, so I, I did my, so all of my higher education in the US. I came here at 18. I went to community college at 19. At like 21, I was in, uh, in college at Rutgers, uh, sort of studying for my uh, bachelor's. And then I got two master's degrees. And one is in journalism, the other one is in public health. And throughout that time, I was sort of in the various continuums of, of being an international student. Like I started out as an international student and then I became a citizen. And I kind of got to see a little bit of both sides of what it's like when you're an international student in higher education versus uh, being a citizen. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would love to hear about that. You know, it's probably, there's probably so many components to it, right? So maybe, um, would you mind sharing a bit about like, about the differences that you saw in teaching and engagement with students? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, as an international student, you, you're basically, you're a foreigner and you may, you may think that you understand what's happening around you, but the world is not like friends or whatever the show that you were watching that made you like think these are the rules in the United States. And so when you come here and you're in higher education, like I think a lot of times you kind of think like, oh, I can, I can deal with this. And then you kind of find out that like, maybe you said something to a professor in a way that like they didn't expect, or you looked away when you should have looked at them, or you, know, you didn't ask questions after class and it's actually important to ask questions after class. And no one really tells you that. Like no one says like, these are the rules of being a college student in the, in the United States. And then often when you're an, an international student, like you come and you know that it's a privilege to be here. And like the education costs a lot of money and you like, you're taking yourself like really seriously. You're taking the education incredibly seriously. And sometimes it, feel, it can feel really frustrating where like your friends who are American uh, would maybe like just, it seems to you like they're slacking off, right? And it can feel really isolating because you are just incredibly like, you feel like you're out of your age group in a way. Cause like the American college experience versus like college experiences elsewhere, they're just completely different. And so what kind of ends up happening is that you, you feel alone. And so it's sort of important to find folks who are A, experiencing what you're experiencing and um, or at least sort of explain, like if you have a roommate that's American and you are, you are not American, then sort of to sort of have discussions about like, oh, you know, maybe your, your tone of voice, voice sounded weird to them because you speak in a different language and the tones are just different. And so then you kind of have to clarify with them. Um, and then, you know, hopefully like you have like a group of folks who can sort of help you through, who can help you feel at home, you know, even if you're not at home. Yeah. So I'd love to hear a bit more about, you know, that community aspect and navigating some of these nonverbal cultural things that you experienced. How would so, you organize that for other internationals? Yeah. So for me, like, you know, I, I 
grew up in Israel and the culture there does not sort of recognize small talk. Like small talk is completely, it doesn't exist. And so when somebody comes to you and they smile at you and they're like, hey, how are you? You're like, uh, fine, what do you want, you know? And so similarly, basically with every culture, there are sort of rules that you bring and you don't even know them until you sort of start seeing how different it is. So like when I was in grad school uh, for public health, we had a lot of folks from China uh, who were international students and they didn't understand that it was okay to interrupt the teacher and say, hey, I have a question in the middle of class. Like that just didn't occur to them. Because, you know, you need to respect the professor. You don't speak in class, you take notes and you're quiet. But then, you know, they would grade us on our participation. And no one sort of thought to say like, hey, I know that you come from a different educational system. So, you know, these are the rules here. Um, and lots of folks, lots of the international students that I uh, met there, you know, they, they read and wrote English really well, but their speaking was kind of a little bit behind because the education system tended to focus on writing and reading. And so you kind of had to, you know, you had to be patient and you had to kind of try to sort of work with them and, and say like, hey, did you mean this? What did you mean? And you kind of find like also that they, you know, they really struggled sometimes with the writing aspect, like the, the grammar or whatever it is. And I kind of wish then that professors would say like, okay, but you speak a different language. And so we should like make some allowances here. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that when you're an international student, you also don't necessarily feel like you can advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you feel like you are somehow at a disadvantage. Like you're here on a visa, uh, there are lots of rules that govern the visa. It can feel really scary. And you, you know, sometimes it feels like um, the education system is doing you a favor by having you. Mm. And so you don't want to like, you don't want to, you know, rock, rock the boat as it were. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that lots of people don't understand until they're kind of in that, like in those shoes of being an international student and feeling like you may be less than. Right, right. Yeah, so you know, you've navigated multiple sections of the American system, the education system. Sorry, I'm tripping over my words. The community college level, the college level, master's degrees, and those are all they, they operate kind of differently. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you found were helpful, whether it's forms or specific staff to build relationships with that helped you kind of move along in each area? Yeah, I would say uh, in your major, whoever it is, it is in your major that you connect with the most, a professor that you connect with the most, an advisor, whoever it is, it's really important to sort of build a relationship because you need someone to help you clarify. Like sometimes you just don't understand. Uh, and it's not even about like achievement. It's like maybe a social thing or how do I go about getting an internship or you know anything like that. And it could be really, really helpful to have someone in authority that you can like spend time with and say, these are the things I'm struggling with, or these, this is what, these are the questions I have. It could also be really, really helpful to have, uh, you know, a friend or two who maybe are sort of, who feel comfortable serving a little bit as your guide, who might say to you like, oh, you know, this is how you do this thing, or this is where you find this thing, or like, this is what the grocery store looks like. And this is how you use self-checkout, uh, you know, because that's not for granted. And I think that the issue with higher education is that you are like sort of expected to be an adult and you're also alone in a new country and you're expected to study in a different language and you miss your home. And all those things sort of, you know, compound and it can be really stressful if you don't sort of like stop and say, okay, but who are my support networks? Who can help me? So it could be a therapist, it could be a teacher, it could be, you know, your roommate, if you have like good rapport with your roommate. And then like, if you can have a sense of humor about it, that does help a lot. Like, um, you know, when I was in college, there were lots of sort of misunderstandings that happened because I just didn't, like there were things I just didn't understand. And like, 
I remember having a conversation with someone about Toll House cookies and not realizing that they're chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, a just a gap in my education. Like just, yeah. And so it's kind of like this weird, like feeling where you're constantly feeling like you don't know everything. And that's okay, that, that's, that's why you're here. But also at the same time, then know that it's normal and know that there are people who really, really want to help. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I think that's really great. You know, I'm hearing a, cu- a few key things from what you're sharing so far. Please tell me if I've, you know, gathered it correctly. So coming in as an international student to a new environment and walking through the American higher education system, some things that you ran into were cultural differences of, of learning, learning styles and engagement with professor, whether or not to talk, whether or not to make eye contact, whether or not to continue to make eye contact or look away and, and um, whether or not to speak. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like from what you're sharing that internationally, those that you studied with, and maybe also yourself, people didn't speak as much, but in the American higher education system, you're, you witnessed a lot of engagement. Um, And I think I'm also hearing that one of the key things that really helped you navigate each space was meeting the right people. So people who are friends that you can actually connect with and process your, you know, shared experiences and also meeting those in positions of authority who are staff at the school um, and allowing them to know a little bit, to kind of be vulnerable, share a little bit about your, whatever it is, struggles or misunderstandings and, and help let them help you. Um, be guided. Am I hearing you correctly? Yeah, absolutely. And I would also say that it's important to sort of know where you're coming from. Like, uh, I think one of the issues or one of the things that could be very, very difficult is that um, a lot of societies that are not the US, they tend to focus on collectivism and on group activity and less on leadership and, and you need to distinguish yourself and you should do everything on your own. And so it can be quite a shock when you come here from a country where maybe groups are more valuable than the individual, where you are told that, you know, you should, you know, everyone should sort of work as a group and it's not about you being alone. And then you come here and you see people sort of exercising their, you know, leadership skills or, you know, whatever it is. And then you feel like, but that's, that's wrong. And so you need to sort of take a moment and to sort of realize, okay, this is where I came from. Um, and it's okay that this is where I came from. And it's okay that I don't necessarily understand uh, what Americans do, but also at the same time, like I can be myself and I can do it with like sort of honoring whatever I think is necessary. Like I can decide to adopt it and be a leader if that's what I think I need to be. Or I can just be like, I really believe in working in a group and that's okay too. And non- neither one is necessarily wrong. It's just that you will feel that sort of like weird uh, disconnect or just weird, like mm, something is just not right here. Yeah, I think, you know, that's a really profound thing that you just shared about kind of a different worldview, right? About what, what, um, what it means to go through an American education system to become an adult, almost like a rite of passage. And um because of the culture, there's kind of a worldview around what a successful student might look like. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd love to hear, you know, this will be my last question today because all this is so fascinating, but I also want to be mindful of your time. Um, What would you advise for um, AAPI, for international students who are, um, and immigrants, you know, people who are just navigating these educational systems, what, what, would you, what would you want to say would be helpful for them in um, maintaining their sense of self mm-hmm. and identity while also interacting with a new and majority culture that they now find themselves as a minority? Mm. Uh, I mean, I think everybody sort of finds their own way to do it. Like I, 
you know, as an immigrant, you kind of go through phases. And when I was in college initially, I really wanted to sort of obliterate everything about me that was different. And I think it was because there was this sort of pressure to be as American as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of like went, whoa, 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 hold on. I was not born here and I don't want to be like everyone else. I want to be like me. And so then there was a process of sort of returning to myself and figuring out like, what are the foods that I like that comfort me that maybe other people don't understand? Uh, what are some like customs that I can sort of maintain at home that help me feel connected to my family? Who can I talk to that understands? Can I talk to other immigrants about like, hey, today I feel really disconnected or today I feel like I'm outside of this society. And, you know, it's kind of fun if you like want to bond with an immigrant, you can say, hey, what's the stupidest thing an American ask you? And <laughs> I promise you, you will get fantastic answers. And not only that, you, it kind of creates a bonding experience where you realize that no matter, like maybe you are the only like Asian person in your group, uh, but the immigration sort of experience is sort of, it's translatable. Uh, there are lots of things that are very similar. Maybe some things are not, but lots of things are very, very similar. And so if you can sort of find the similarities and, and sort of realize that you are not alone, you know, then you're golden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. I just realized um, while you were while you were speaking that um, there's a couple resources that I would like to share too. Mm -hmm. And um, and I don't want to you know prevent you from speaking. So if you want to share anything else, you're welcome to as well. I just remembered that at least in um, Ohio and some other states, there is a ministry called International Friendships Incorporated. And they are a um, Christian-based ministry, but they don't require the participants to be. And they specifically look for international students in mm -hmm. higher education systems to then befriend. Mm -hmm. And they'll help with um, transportation, back and forth with the airport. They'll invite them to Thanksgiving, an American Thanksgiving, an American Christmas, to go through these holidays together when um, people are on vacation, the school's mm -hmm. on vacation, but the international student where they come from, it's not a national holiday. So they don't, um, and, and plus the plane tickets are so expensive, right? They might not be able to see their families. And so they interact together. They can, um, sometimes have dinners together and these different events. Um, it's not, I don't think it's all 50 States, but there there's multiple States where they exist. And um, I'm not aware of another one that is similar to that, but um, I wonder if there were other like school organizations or community resources that maybe you could speak to as well, um, just, like, you know, getting to the grocery store and getting those ethnic. So I just like ended up like sort of identifying the person with the car in my, in my dorm. I'm saying, please, please, please give me a ride to the, mid to the Middle Eastern store because I really need hummus. For the love of God, give me hummus. <laughs> and you know, and that worked. That worked really well. And you know, she was uh, really receptive to that. Um, and I think that if I, like if I needed to figure out a bus or the, or a subway or something like that, then somebody could have helped me with that too. And then like, it's okay to feel lost too. Like I've gotten lost many a times when I was trying to navigate this like being American thing. <laughs> and it's totally okay because like you gotta, like even if it looks like everybody else around you knows exactly what they're doing and you don't know what, what you're doing, like that's actually not true. Often you will hear from folks that are feeling really self-conscious. They don't know what they're doing, even if they're American. So it's like not, you know, it's not a disadvantage for you to be different. And in fact, it's kind of really cool because first of all, when you were talking about like traveling on the holidays, I mean, do you know how cool the dorms are when they're empty? <laughs> you can like basically do whatever you want. Like you can slide on the like hallways. You can like, you know, it's your, you, you get your own room because your roommate is gone. So you can also sort of do your own thing. 
Like if there's no holiday, if Christmas is not your holiday and you don't want to celebrate it, that's okay. And you can decide that, you know, today is the day to binge watch Breaking Bad. Like, you know, <laughs> you do you. And I think that's like really, really important. Um, and, you know, Thanksgiving maybe is a little bit easier, right? Because it's like, it's a holiday that's maybe not as religious, but again, like the idea of carving a turkey is a little revolting to me. So, you know, I just kind of, you know, decided that I'm going to celebrate it the way that I want. And so I think like deciding what you want and trying to learn also about like folks who are kind of like you and what they do, like you might be able to find yourself in like a group of people who maybe are uh, more established immigrants and they can tell you some things about how to navigate the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks so much. This was, you know, really sweet to hear more about your experience, Leora. Um, you know, before we close, do you have any other last thoughts that you want to include? For um, you know, like beyond just saying that I totally get it. It's a really singular experience to be an international student in higher education and, and just kind of like embrace it and, and try your best to sort of take sort of the good and the bad. And I think like in the end, it's really worth it. Like you, whether you stay here or you go back to your country, the fact that you spent this time being a little confused, like it sort of helps you. Like when you go back to your country or even if you stay here, it helps you to be more reflective and, and to sort of challenge like, okay, I grew up with this idea, but I don't necessarily want to have this idea because I saw that in America, there's this idea. So it means that I can change my mind, right? So it's kind of like, it's a really wonderful advantage um, and even if it's hard, just kind of look at it like it's a, it's an adventure and it'll be okay. Yeah. Wow. That's really encouraging. And I'm sure that other people who, you know, are AAPI or international students who may not be AAPI will take some encouragement from what you shared. Thank you again for having this conversation. You're welcome. Well, with that, we will close this, uh, interview and... See you all next time. Bye.